The PGA Tour, European Tour and rival Live Golf Circuit have announced a landmark agreement to merge and form a commercial entity to unify the sport. The Live Golf Series launched last year and has lured a number of big name players from the PGA Tour, including Australian Cameron Smith. The circuit is bankrolled by the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund. Critics have accused it of being a vehicle for the country to attempt to improve its reputation in the face of criticism of its human rights record. Jimmy Emanuel is the deputy editor of Golf Australia magazine. He says the merger is a big shock. Yeah, it's blindsided everyone. The players definitely didn't know until the release came out this morning and, and a lot of them found out on Twitter actually and, and then went into a players meeting. Uh, it was very much behind closed doors, a handful of people discussing what was going to happen with the world of men's professional golf and then making an announcement about it. I texted one live golfer this morning who said he knew as much as I did so wasn't in a position to comment yet. Do you think players should have been consulted ahead of this announcement? You would have thought so. The PGA Tour is a player-run organisation, so I would have thought that at least the players on the policy board might have uh, had some say in this. Players like Rory McIlroy have been exceptionally outspoken on this and, and leaders of the PGA Tour's cause didn't find out about it until everyone else did. So that's a very surprising thing. Greg Norman, the CEO of Live Golf, apparently found out a couple of minutes before everyone else. So a very surprising thing that the, the key stakeholders, being the players and the organisational staff, weren't involved in the, in the conversations. Wow, so we don't actually know that Greg Norman was involved in these conversations because he was instrumental in setting up Live. Yeah, he was the face of the organisation from an organisational standpoint for sure and, and it's a big part of his vision he had for World Golf a long time ago. So he has been involved heavily but whether he's been involved at all in these talks, I'm not sure at this stage. Um, he looks like he it, it certainly hasn't been involved in the final decision making and the deal that's been brokered and what his role moving forward is, nobody knows at this point either. OK, so lots of question marks there. How will this merger work? We don't know. We won't know for a while. I think I think it's been rushed through quite quickly, to be honest, to try and get it in the ground and then move forward because leaks have been coming out with all this sort of stuff constantly every time something happens. It won't actually take shape till next year. Live Golf will play out their series this year. The PJ Tour will continue with their schedule. Next year is when we will see some sort of merger. Um, so how it looks at this stage is anyone's guess, to be honest. The harshest criticism of the Live Golf Tour is about the human rights record of Saudi Arabia, which funds the tour. Is this a win for Saudi Arabia? Did the PGA acquiesce to Live's growing popularity in deep pockets? It's hard to not see it as a win for Saudi Arabia, who wanted to be involved in professional golf. They wanted to be involved with the PGA Tour, which is the biggest circuit in professional golf. They now have a seat at the table and part of a controlling sort of part of a new entity that is a for-profit part of the PGA Tour, which is a not-for-profit. Um, so that's exactly what they were after. They've spent a lot of money to get that, taken a lot of hits publicly, including from the PGA Tour Commissioner, who now is organising this, organi this merger. But uh, it's, it's hard to argue that it's not a win for Saudi Arabia and the Public Investment Fund and its purpose. So Amnesty says this is sports washing and further evidence of Saudi Arabia's efforts to draw attention away from the country's human rights record. Does the merger basically give tacit approval or turn a blind eye to those human rights concerns? Well, sports washing's been the argument against Live Golf and against the investment the whole time, including again from the PGA Tour. Uh, it's hard to say that it's not you know, working as a sports washing concept if you're then buying up into the PGA Tour and getting access to the best players in the world, the biggest tournaments in the world, and then, you know, producing stuff that is positive around Saudi Arabia and, and its purposes. What was the litigation about that this merger now avoids? Yeah, so players from Live Golf who'd been banned from the PGA Tour had sued the tour. Live Golf took over that case from the players. The PGA Tour countersued. So it was going to be a, quite a complex situation. It wasn't going, to, wasn't going to actually happen until the start of next year. But it was going to potentially allow discovery into Saudi Arabia's investment in Live Golf, which they didn't want quite clearly, but also antitrust investigations into the PGA Tour, which has a unique not-for-profit status in America despite being a very highly financial organisation. So neither organisation wanted wanted that to progress. Who would have won it? We have no idea. But it's a very happy circumstance for both parties that that case is now done and dusted and, and goes away.